be in the top. Hey guys! Hello there. Hi, how's it going? No, you're good. I knew it was coming. I could see the, the boxes were ending and the thing was doing its thing, so I had two seconds to finish my sentence. All right, so welcome to what I'm calling Leather 101. 101. That's right. This is the beginning course of Leathercraft information. So I... Like, every once in a while, I feel like we'll kind of have a back-to-the-basic situation where we, we talk about it. Or maybe just in the process of doing some project, um, we go down a tangent of some sort that kind of, you know, we'll, we'll get a little bit into types of leather or different things. But I thought it, it might be really good to just kind of, there's a lot of new people to the channel and maybe you don't want to go all the way back to five years ago. Maybe you just want to watch it live or currently or whatever. Um, just kind yeah. of plus there's a lot of people that have been here forever yeah. watching this you know and you've still got i've got questions exactly you know no one knows the whole thing if they did we'd all be done <laughs> that's right <laughs> no sense for us to be here yeah <laughs> and so i um i've been kind of percolating on this thought for a little bit and since we finished the cantle bag a day early or we just needed one day for that i i talked to denny uh wednesday afternoon and i said hey let's let's start our little leather class where we just literally talk about leather and each episode will be different. We'll have a different kind of topic today. We are just going to be talking about leather. Yeah. We have all of the leathers. We brought in a huge selection for those of you that have never been to the store personally or have never had the privilege to go to any sort of leather craft store. Like if you don't live next to a Tandy and you do most of your purchasing online, you know, you can look through the websites and see it, but when you don't get to feel it and touch it and, yeah. and look at all the variation, like the variation is literally never ending when it comes to leather. That's right. And you know, there's no substitute for touch and feel. Uh, absolutely. I mean, but if you play your cards right and ask the right questions, you can, you can pretty much get what you want. Yeah. You know, especially if you talk to us. Yeah. Because, if you... <laughs> because if we misunderstand you, and you say, you misunderstood me, you can send it back and we'll send you something else. <laughs> That's right. We're going to do our best to figure it out. Um, and so Denny and I have gone through the store this morning and, and picked out a little bit of everything. We've got exotics. We've got some hair on options. We have some veg. We have some misplit veg that we can talk about. I've got the glossary from good old catalog um, yeah. that talks about different leather terms. Yeah. If you guys have things that you've been wondering or questions or things that you don't understand, you're looking through the website and you see terms that you that you just don't know what they are give us a shout out let us know i'll be watching you know the chat as we go um and we can try to answer your questions in real time with different styles of leather i do not have a facebook one over here are there people hanging out on facebook today before we start though I've, yeah i've got to i've got to say something oh there's a fellow from valley center kansas okay he's an ex-policeman and he wrote me a letter his name is scott wiswell Ooh. He wrote me a letter, and he's a cowboy poet. And he wrote another he, one. He, another one, and he wrote a poem. And the letter was just delightful. You know, it just made me feel good. And the poem is even better. But I would like to extend an invitation because <clears throat> Valley Center, Kansas, is 250 miles from Springfield. Okay, That's a five-hour drive if you take your time. So. Scott, you need to come here on a Wednesday or a Friday and recite this poem on the air for people. In person. I would, I would love that, and so would everybody else, I think. Come on down, Scott. But thank you. <laughs> Aw. Come get some. Come get some. <laughs> we, we, we do love when you guys get a chance to come in or do you take the time to send us things like that? Yeah. Like it really means we had um, one of our live shopping regulars was in yesterday, Cynthia from over in South Carolina, and we just had Cat Rock. I'm sorry, Catherine. Was it Cynthia? Latitude. Latitude, Cat Rock. Cat Catherine, not Cynthia. Is this I don't know now. I'm super confused and you're going to watch she this and I'm going to feel really bad. She was a little blonde-haired woman, I remember. Yes. <laughs> now I'm just, 
I think I have some people confused in my head. In any case, we love it when you guys come. And it's really an amazing experience that, like, Denny and I never thought. I mean, we both started here working retail. And, like, you've been doing leather work for forever. Yeah. But we just never expected that we would be in a situation where so many people across the country and across the world are watching us every week to 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 see what we got going on. Yeah. And yeah. to get some inspiration or to get information. And we just want to say a huge thank you to all of you that do tune in yeah. every week or take the time to watch our videos. Because we know that we ramble a lot. <laughs> so, and, and sometimes things don't go well when we're doing things. Scott said in his letter, he said, I really learn a lot from, from your videos. But he said, I also really just enjoy watching you guys. Yeah. <laughs> everybody see it's it, the the rambling on is not bad for everyone <laughs> <laughs> just some people yeah. all right so denny where should we start uh let's pick out a piece of leather well do you want to start with veg because it's kind of on the yeah. top okay yeah. <clears throat> we've got a double shoulder here yeah so there are there are two main ways of producing leather you have vegetable tanned leather and you have chrome tanned leather now there is a third option um, you do not see it a lot in like the resale market. It is mostly in the manufacturing market and it is leather tanned with formaldehyde. Um, that is a thing that I learned about. It is mostly automotive. It has very specific qualities to where it does not fade in the sun. So people that are wanting color fast leathers in automotive purposes will use this formaldehyde tanned leather. Wow. Um, so... Buy your own tombstone to tool on and get formaldehyde leather. And to you wrap can yourself tool in. and embalm yourself at the same time. <laughs> Aren't we fancy? <laughs> All right. And so, but for our purposes at Springfield Leather, we mostly, and, and I'm going to say we mainly just have chrome tan leathers and vegetable tan right. leathers. Right. Um, but, but each tannery tans... You know, each they tannery, have their own they have their formulas. own little formulas, mm -hmm. little recipes. Yes. And <clears throat> this vegetable tan leather, they it's called vegetable tan because they use plants to tan it with That's right. make the tannic acid. But it, it depends on most they, of it. They is, don't they use, use vegetables. Tree bark. They, yeah, they use yeah. tree bark. Well, some they some I'm I've heard of some, you know, using different stuff other than tree bark tree bark. But tree bark is the main thing. Yeah. And uh the the leather from uh, St. Louis the, yep. at uh, Herman Oak is tanned with oak bark, and it's a specific type of oak tree, mm -hmm. you know, so that, so it keeps a consistent color. And I'm I'm sure these yeah, because the the specific bark that each tannery uses will produce a different color of leather. Yeah, for the raw leather, and that's what vegetable tan leather. Most of it is is just a raw leather. It's been tanned, right, and and, and not finished. And yeah, and it's unfinished, and that's the beauty of it because you can do a lot of different things with it. Exactly, and it is probably the most um, like like uh, you when it comes to chrome tan leathers, they they some of the chromium that is used to tan it will still reside in the leather after it's tanned, and so vegetable tan leather. Typically, like, if it's a true full veg, it will not have any chrome in it, and that makes it applicable for, like, people make bird toys out of this kind of thing. You know, if your little baby toddler is running around on the floor and starts to chew on a piece of veg tan leather, it's, it's probably not the end of the world. Like, it, No, it, and it'll keep him pliable. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's it's just, like, the most basic situation. Right. It does take longer to tan something in a vegetable tan method versus a chrome tan. Chrome tan can happen very, very quickly, just a couple of days. And veg tan usually takes at minimum, I think like a week for the, for the people that are doing the uh, pickle fast method um, up to Herman Oak takes a full month to tan their leather in their vats. I remember when, when you and I mm -hmm. were at, uh, at uh, the Herman Oak tannery, uh, Chef Herman was talking to us and someone asked him who, who invented the, the tanning method that they use. And he said, well, it's probably some cavemen. Yep. They'd skin some kind of an old buffalo or something. Left it laying in a puddle. Th threw it over in a mud puddle, and a tree fell down in it. And a year later, they came back, and there was a piece of leather laying there. Yep. You know. So. <laughs> that is a fun little story. That's how it all came about. That's how right it started. There, 
how does anything start? <laughs> we get curious. And so, okay, so as far as cuts go, so we're talking about veg tan leather when you're when you're talking about typically, I, I mean, all leathers will come in different cuts, but usually when you're looking at a at, at veg, you can get full sides. Um, rarely will you find a whole hide in vegetable tan leather, especially anything thick or like an actual cow. You can find calf skins. You can find, um, I've got a, this is a lamb skin right here. So this is a vegetable tanned lamb. Let's see if I, oh, I'm sorry. It's a goat. It's a veg tan goat. It's, you know, pretty similar to a reason, lamb. The main reason you don't find full hides in vegetable tan leather is because they tan it full weight. Correct. And, and it's so heavy, a full, full hide, a full cow hide, when it's untanned, just off the cow, there's a reason that mostly men work. 150 tanneries. pounds, yeah. you know, and you put, put if you put a 150 pound hide in a in a tanning vet, it's going to gain weight. So you've got a 250 pound yeah. Try you can't handle that. Well, and also, so like Herman Oak specifically, and I'm I'm sure most tanneries have this. They they have pits in the ground, and so these hides go into pits in the ground, and then they sit on these racks. For, for days and weeks at a time as they move through the process and get tanned. Yep. And so to dig a vat that would fit a whole side, you'd have to go right. eight foot into the ground. And I mean, you know, right. that's they just they just don't do it. So the hides come in, they take the hair off. As a full hide, they'll take the hair off and then they'll split them down the spine and then the process starts. Yeah. Um and so that is most veg tan, unless it's small skins, you're getting a, a half of a hide which is a side in leather terminology, and that is mostly split down the spine. So you'll get the full length of the cow, you'll get a shoulder, you have a belly, and you have the back sections. That's really dark, yeah. Justin. Gen generally around, what, 22 to 28 square feet, mm -hmm. something like that. Yep, I think Herman Oaks average is 22 to 26, so you get a solid, like, 24-foot average. Um, yeah. A lot of the times, a lot of leather comes out of Brazil, and they have really big cows down they there. They do, huge. Huge! Brazil is a huge cattle industry, um, and they will, sometimes we'll see our lighter weight veg come in, and it'll be 30-plus square feet. It is not, it is not uncommon to see a 33, 34, six square footer so that means the whole hide at one point was like upwards of like 80 feet almost yeah. like like banging Did, on 80. didn't we have one on one of the cutting tables back there one time that it just it we got a 60 only, square foot side in one yeah, time a 60 only, square foot side there's a picture from forever ago on our facebook page that's insane it is, we took it outside and we held it up. There was like six or seven people holding it up in front of one of our eight foot trailers. And it was longer than the trailer. Yeah. This four by eight tra table, if it was an eight by eight table, it would still be hanging over the edge all around. It was easily. Huge. That means it was a 120 foot hide. Like, I don't know what that, like, how did that cow even live? I don't know how he was. How did they find enough to feed that cow? Uh, that was the biggest one. In any case, um, that's the thing. They just kept they, they just so uh, yeah, it's, it was a big cow. Okay, so let's see here. You can get full sides in a lot of veg, and then a lot of your import leather will come in in a double shoulder. Yeah, double was, shoulders. That's what we had. Right yeah, here. are really nice for belt makers. So especially like if you're doing a lot of tooling or like for us, we emboss a lot of strips. Shoulders do have they have a lot more fat wrinkles than the rest of the hide. Um, and you know, you're, you're only going to have that like 50 inch, maybe 55 inch yeah. yield out of it. So if you're kind of making a regular belt for regular old folks, not any big, big boys, um, a double shoulder is a good option. And typically it is quite a bit less than say buying the bend of a side or buying a full side to cut belts from. Yeah. And double shoulders is the front half of a hide correct as opposed to instead of splitting the hide down the spine right they'll split it in the middle and and, and tan the front and the back separately yeah and so a lot of times you'll yeah. see like the boot industry is from what i've gathered in my years going to like wisa and things um the boot industry takes the back of the hide they tan that for um 
for shoe leather. Yeah. So they tan that for sole leather. They'll cut the back off and then they'll tan the back half for your sole bins and things like that. And then they have the front half left over and that leather, the grain is a little bit looser on the neck because the cow moves around a lot. So with those fat wrinkles and all that stuff, they don't necessarily want that in a shoe sole. So they tan the back half for boots and shoes and then they tan the front as a double shoulder and then they sell that to crafters. Yeah, Use it for, yeah for all sorts of belts. And a lot of belts. Just just all sorts of different things. Or a lot of those boot manufacturers also make belts. So then they'll take the double shoulder, they'll, they'll cut it up, and then they'll make some sort of a belt out of it. Yeah, we, um, and we sell a lot of double shoulders here for, do. for uh, like, uh, holster makers mm -hmm. and knife sheath makers and, and like that because it's it's an economical cut of leather. Yeah. And and it's generally pretty clear. And, you know, it has some fat wrinkles, but still, when you when you do something with it, most of those wrinkles aren't visible. Right. Or you embrace the fat wrinkles because leather is a natural product. And I, I feel very strongly about this personally. And I feel like I talked about it yesterday. But leather is a natural product that comes from animals that live not necessarily in the wild. You know, there's some exotics that are living in the wild. They live and outside. They live outside. Most everybody has some sort of barbed wire fence. Cows seem to think that those are really nice little scratchy poles. For them to scratch an itch that they can't find. Plus, they like to wrestle each other. They do. <laughs> a lot of cows have horns. That's a thing. And so, you know, for the most part, actually, almost always, there's very few times where the hides are not coming out of yeah. the meat industry. Yeah. People are not producing hides for the leather unless you are... Unless you are Louis Vuitton and you are contracting with a small-scale farming system yeah. to get the exact hide that you want for your stuff or, you know, one of those really, really big name, uh, like Coach, I feel like does that. And then there's a couple other, I don't remember their names. Well, most, most regular tanneries, they can't, they can't collect enough hides that are, that are usable for them from small... Yeah. Small packing plants. Right. Yeah. So you're, they, so they it's go the meat to the industry. Big packing plants. Like I think Herman Oak said that they only they only take black haired cows, hides from black haired cows. Okay. You know, like Angus cows. Yeah. And that's all they want. They well want, they want heavy steers. They want Nate like US heavy yeah, steers. You know, and and they and, buy from like the, the three big packing plants. Yeah. Like that's who they buy from. Yeah. Out in, in the US. Dodge City. Yeah. You know, those those kind of places, you know. But but a small tannery, you know, which doesn't use Herman Oak tans. I think what do they say? Five hundred sides or five hundred hides a day, or five hundred sides. Sides, five hundred sides a yeah. day. Yeah. So it's hard to get five hundred cow hides from a small, small to to process plant. every day. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, and so like the leather that we are getting is not produced for leather. It is produced. For the meat industry, there are very small and very specific situations where an animal is being cared for for its hide. And if that is the case, then the price on that is astronomical for that hide, you know, and and, and, and that's what they're working with. Um, and so leather has fat wrinkles. Leather will have scars. Yeah, it, has, it has character. Yeah. And that's the beauty of leather. That's so, right. You know, that's what it's all about. It's not a piece of plastic. Exactly. And so kind of, you know, when you get, so this is, you know, the, the smaller the skin, obviously, the less the blemishes it's going to have. This is a goat skin. It really, I mean, it has fat wrinkles that you can see right there. Um, but otherwise, this is, I mean, there's no scarring. There's no anything. He's, yeah. he, you know, he was a, a small dude, not, not doing too much probably. Um, but then when you move into something like this is a Herman Oak single shoulder. Right? So Herman Oak, after it's tanned, it goes up on drying racks and is clipped and stretched. So all of these clips, uh, they, they have huge metal clips and these huge racks that they will hang and stretch and they'll pull it all the way around. So every time you get a piece of leather, and most tanneries are like this, they're going to have clip marks. Yeah. I've... I have literally had people that have really never bought leather before. Maybe they just bought pre-cuts on Amazon for a while or whatever. And they're like, yeah, what's that, what's that, wrong with my leather? What's yeah, going on here? That, there's something, that, there's marks on the leather. It's a poor quality. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they want to return it because of clip marks. Same way with these armpits. You exactly. Know? Yeah, this is an armpit. <laughs> this, is, this is the top of a leg. 
Yeah. You know, this is the beginning of the neck and the under part and the, the fat little cow. In any case, like, leather's going to have wrinkles. Like, I don't know if you've ever looked at a cow's neck, but they're pretty wrinkly. Yeah, but that's also why they why they clip then it they on a rack and stretch it yeah. so it dries out as flat as they can get it. But, but Exactly. It's not perfection, you know. You aren't buying a piece of, of man-made material. You're, yeah. Or like even even with even with veg tan. So handling veg tan because it is unfinished, it is in a raw sort of state that is ready to be worked with and gone over. It's really easy to get blemish marks through traveling, through handling, throwing one hide on top of another, rolling it up, even just rolling this up and trying to push. If you were to buy this full weight, this neck part as you roll it up is probably going to put a burnish mark yeah. on on the hide. Yeah, but with that said, you know, if an accomplished leather crafts person can you can wet this leather and use a slicker on it. That's right. And get rid of most mm. of those marks. Even all of it out. And the ones they don't get rid of, they can work around. Yeah. You know, use it in a in a not visible area. Right. You know. You know, we'll have people that they'll get a piece of leather and there'll be a hole over here up in the so this is the the back side where they've cut it off up here, and you've got the the neck. Yeah, oh, yeah. actually, that's the neck. I'm sorry. Yeah. And this is the leg. Yes. This is the this is the under neck. Yeah. Um. You know, there'll be like a hole in this section. They'll, they'll think the hide is trashed. Yeah. <laughs> but on, like, because leather is a natural product, a million things happened. Or leather with brands. Every hide in the U.S. has been branded. Most hides in Brazil have been branded. Like everybody, if it if it moves to farms, it's probably going to get branded again. Yeah. Um, so it's really hard to get a hide. Every hide, you might get one side that doesn't have a brand because they didn't brand that side of the butt. Yeah. But the <laughs> other side of that cow has a brand on its butt. Um, right. right. Plus, you take a piece of leather like this, and it has it has like these clip marks and and these armpit marks and and fat wrinkles. And people say, well, that's that's defective, that's poor quality. But what in the heck kind of a project are they going to use that uses this piece of leather like this? Oh, yeah. They're going to cut it up and make stuff out of, out of pieces exactly. of that leather. And I think a lot of times people that are really new to leather, you know, they'll, they'll be getting into and they'll get something and it has the natural characteristics and they don't understand how to work with it yet. And so they... They look at it and they're like, it looks ugly. It looks terrible. Right. And especially Herman Oak. Yeah, especially, yeah. Especially Herman Oak. Yeah. yeah. So it's... Herman Oak, the way that they tan, they get a darker, I'm going to call it a crust. Veg crust, mm -hmm. for lack of a better. Yeah, that's. You, you get a darker tone. So more I. More of a russet color. Yeah. yeah. Um, with a lot of import leathers, the, the bark tannins that they use or the way that they tan their item, you get a much paler leather. Yeah. And you can hide blemishes yeah. in that white pasty leather like you can't hide yeah. in a more, in, in a darker tannage. Um, or the burnish marks show up better. Or Herman Oak doesn't plate their leather like almost all leather will come out of a tannery plated at some point. They have a they have a, like a hot slicker and they'll plate down the surface so that a lot of, you know, the open grain, they'll close it up a little bit. But they don't plate theirs nearly as much as a lot of import leather. And you can tell that by the way that the leather takes water. Yeah. And, and the plating, all, all it does is it uh, it hides some blemishes. Mm -hmm. The blemishes are But when you go better. to antique it, yeah, all those bug show bites show up. up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so just because the leather looks maybe rougher on the surface when you get it doesn't mean that it is, yeah. if that makes sense. And Herman Oak is just kind of different. Yeah. Well, you know, the point is vegetable tan leather is an unfinished leather. Right. And it's up to you to, to make it look finished. Right. You know, whereas a finished leather, they've already gone through all the processes that you're going to go through. Right. And they've colored it. They've uh, and they've industrialized that or, process, or, so they get a much more consistent yeah, yeah. finish than you probably yeah. will. So, all right, I think that's enough on veg. We can talk if anybody has more questions about veg. We can kind of go over it. I will show you. So, all leather comes in um, 
ounce options. And if you're not from the U.S., most likely you will see those as millimeters. So most of the rest of the world will buy leather based on the millimeter thickness. So 1.2 to 1.4, 1.4 to 1.6. And it usually goes in like a 0.2 millimeter scale as you move up. Here in the U.S., most of the time we're talking about ounces, which is how much a piece of leather weighs per square foot. Right. Um, and so whenever we sell a piece of leather, it will always be a variation, just like that 1.2 to 1.6 yeah, millimeter. That's an average weight. Correct. We sell things in a 2 to 3 ounce or a 3 to 4 ounce or a 4 to 5 ounce. And it goes like that. And we do that. Well, I mean, you have to do that because, once again, leather is a natural product. It might stretch. It's going to move. We send it through these machines called splitters, which is a really big bandsaw laying on its side, basically. Um, there's a big blade that runs through, and it levels out a side. Um, when you try to go too thin, this can happen. So leather splitting is an art, and each machine is a little bit different. And splitting small pieces is really easy to get really consistent things. When you're splitting a piece that's 12 inch by 12 inch and you're going through and it's a nice sturdy veg tan leather that doesn't have any stretch and is, it's real, you know, it's a solid piece of leather, you can get a really consistent, and we can probably take that down to like an ounce and a half, maybe even a one ounce really easily. When you start splitting a whole side, however, on one of the really big splitters, the, the tension across the machine is different, The how it goes through. And sometimes yeah. if you try to go too thin on a full side, which is why our full sides are only down to a 2-3, and even then, things like this happen. The firmer part of the leather, the tighter the grain, the easier it splits. Right. The looser the grain, which is what happens when you get down on the lower part of the side, down towards the, the belly and the arms, or legs, <laughs> that's, the grain gets looser, and that's that's when you get this kind of stuff. Right. Bowl says that's what it looks like when they use their skyvers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Bell Knife Skyvers can do the same thing. In any case, so we do have three splitters here. We have one full side splitter. We have two uh, smaller splitters that will split like a belt bend or small pieces. But it's um, it's tricky. It's tricky, <laughs> and going really, really thin on large pieces is very difficult. And yeah. sometimes, like. We'll ruin a whole side. And so, in any case, if you have needs like this where you need a piece of leather in a different thickness, sometimes we can help. Sometimes we'll do our best to help. Um, it really depends on the leather, the situation, the size of the piece. There's a whole slew of factors. So this is always a good time to call in, talk to us. You can even talk to Jared at the end of the day, talk to Jacob, um, and we'll see what we can do for you as far as splitting leather goes. All right. So... Well, we're done with veg. Let's be done with veg. <laughs> let's be done. Um, let's see here. So, talking about the tanning process, talking about coloring, this is this can be specific to veg or a chrome tan leather, yeah, is know. how much color actually gets into the hide. So, I've seen before there's um, at least one specific bag manufacturer that I'm thinking about, and I won't say who, but they like to talk about how... They only use leather where the color goes all the way through the hide. And they like to say that if you look at, if you cut a piece of the edge of the leather and there isn't dye all the way through it, it makes for a lower grade piece of leather, which is just not true. So you have what it's drum dyeing, tanneries drum dye. Herman Oak will spray dye things, but in general, tanneries are not spraying dye onto pieces of leather. Yeah. They put leather into a drum and they put their chemicals in the drum and the drum goes around and it tumbles penetrates. It. Yeah, yeah, tumbles it. They usually need to have at least 50 sides. Like that's what Herman Oak wants to dye at once because the less that you put in the drum, the more uneven things come out. Their drums are a certain size. They need a certain amount of leather, which is why if you just want like two pieces of leather at a certain color, they're probably going to spray dye that. It's going to cost more. And honestly, they're not going to do it for two. You have to buy at least 10. Um, but so tanneries put leather into drums and then they dye them. And so sometimes they don't leave the, the leather in the drum long enough for the dye to penetrate all the way through. So you have a drum dyed piece of leather, but it may not be struck through. Well, and sometimes they don't mean to strike exactly. it all the way through. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's very much on purpose a lot of times what they're doing. And so this is an example. We have a, a piece of Herman Oak. Um, bridal leather, 
And so this piece of bridal leather, it has been dyed. This is the back. This is the front. So they put it in a drum. They dyed it on both sides. But the, the dye did not penetrate all the way through. And you can see that natural veg crust right there. That does not make this piece of leather good or bad or anything. It's just a fact about the leather. Yeah, it was tanned in, in the same vat the other leather is tanned. Exactly. So that means whenever you split the back off, you'll no longer have a colored back, depending on how far you split it down, but you'll start getting back into this natural. Um, this is their collar leather or their just drum dyed veg. It is struck all the way through. So they, on purpose, left it in long enough for the color to penetrate all the way through the hide. Um, and you'll see there are oil tan leathers that may not be struck all the way through. You'll see if you cut a section off of a side, you might see that there's a crust line in the middle. That is just a fact of any piece of leather. It does not make it good. It does not make it bad. It doesn't make it anything except for you know that if you're finishing the edge and you want it a one consistent color, now you might have to dye it or you might have to edge coat it, or you might have to do something different, or maybe you want to skive it and roll it. Whatever the case may be, it's just a fact. Yeah. The good and bad is, is a questionable term, you know. <laughs> I mean, this is a fine piece of leather. This is a fine piece of leather. Everything we've got on this table is good leather. Right. We, we try not to sell any, any poor quality leather. When you get into when people are talking about poor quality, you might get a poor quality dye job. Sure. You know, which which would be blotchy. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you could say that's a poor quality, but it's not a poor quality leather. It's a poor quality dye job. Right. The finishing went awry. Yeah. But most tanneries are have, take a little more pride in what they do than to send out a bunch of poor quality dyed leather. Right. You know, which so, is why we get like crates from Warren Giles, because yeah. because sometimes those will have splotches, and yeah. they're not going to send those out as regular leather. They're going to sell it to us for cheaper, and then we can sell it to you for cheaper. You don't have to pay fifteen dollars a square foot for that upholstery hide from Warren Giles because the dye dog didn't come out correctly. Right, but there again, you know, you can use those kind of leathers for to your advantage. That's you right, because you know? the leather is still really good leather. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the yeah. leather. Yeah, you just just be aware that when someone says that's poor quality, you know, there's very few poor quality leathers. Yeah. You know, most, most tanneries have a lot more pride in what they do. Well, and there's also a difference. So you have like everything, pretty much everything that we sell here is going to be a solid piece of leather. It is either, even if it's a suede, it's still a solid piece of leather that just doesn't have a grain on it anymore. It's been split and finished. Um, we really do not sell what is called like um like a PU leather. Like the only thing that we're going to have is our finished Saffiano splits, but those are still a finished split. We don't sell any particle leather. Right. Um, yeah. Nothing that like is going to be like, you know, like the sawdust. Reconstituted. Reconstituted leather. We uh, maybe every once in a while we'll get some in an odd lot. That will probably be something that Kevin puts in an ugly bundle at, at the m most or he might throw it away if he finds that that is the case. Um, everything that we have here is some sort of solid piece of leather. So there's a difference between buying leather that has been processed and buying the reconstituted, um, or vi like we don't sell vinyl here. Like that is like a pleather type situation or, yeah, because Un you will- Unborn Naga hide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because there is, I like- for the car industry, there is a decent amount of upholstery leather that is probably made out, like that is a reconstituted or heavily finished, yeah. low quality split. Um, Anytime you see a piece of, of leather that's blemish free mm -hmm. throughout, beware. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've, they've doctored it some way or another to make it like that. Right. And so like even for us, so we have like a couple of examples. I mean, this is a full grain leather, but you can't, you can't see the leather anymore because it's been completely embossed and then painted. Um, but this, the only way to get this embossed is to kind of start with a semi veg crust. So it may not be a full veg, but it's going to have a little bit of veg so it can hold the shape. It has to have moisture in it. Right. Yeah. Um, 
and then we have upholstery leathers. So a lot of your upholstery leathers will have what's what we call an acrylic finish. So you have two main types of finishes on leather. You have aniline finishes, and a lot of those are going to be dye jobs and then some sort of a clear coat on the leather. So they'll be struck through or just drum dyed. A lot of times they're struck through because upholstery leather is thin and it really is not that hard to, to strike it through. But you'll have um, leather that is dyed and then a clear finish has been put on so that you can still see the natural characteristics of the leather. But then we still sell like our Miracle and Sensation upholstery hides, and these have an acrylic finish on them, which is paint, for those of you that don't it's know paint, that. But it's also it's also of a very good quality. Paint. Yes. It's not going to rub off. No, 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 no. It's, it's good. But so a different, so this, this is an aniline finish. So this is our Venetian upholstery. Um, this is what I would consider, you can still see the fat wrinkles that go across it. Um, you can still see the characters of the hide. Like if there was a brand on this hide, we would definitely still be able to see the brand. Things like that. This is going to be what we call an aniline finish where you can still see the leather. It's been dyed. Um, maybe a wax coat so that you get this kind of distressed situation mm -hmm. happening. But this is going to be an acrylic finish where you really don't see a lot. It's been embossed, first of all, with a pebble grain. Um... And then tumbled. Right. And then it's it's had an acrylic finish put on it. So this will always be the color of this leather for th for most of time. Well, in, in a lot of projects people make, they'll, they might think, uh, well, I used the, the quality of that leather that I used for that project wasn't good. But they used the wrong type of leather for that project. Yeah. You know, the, like the other day when we were making that... Uh, Oh. When I was making that the candle. candle bag, mm -hmm. you know, I was thinking that uh, that piece of leather that I had was perfect, but it was so stiff. Yeah, it wasn't poor quality. It was just it had a really stiff hand to it. Yeah, and it it didn't work nearly nearly as well. If I would have used a more pliable type leather, it would have worked better. So don't mis don't mistake quality for uh, the way your project ends up a lot of times. Can you explain semi veg? Um, so tanneries will do several different things depending on what they're attempting to get out. So like our buffalo leather, um, the buffalo bins that we sell, the kind of firm buffalo belting leather is a veg retan. Um, they have vegetable tanned at first to give it the structure that they need. And then they have chrome tanned it to give it the qualities that they're looking for yeah, of almost like an the oil color tan. color and the finish. Right, yeah. the color and the finish. Right. And so there are some leathers that have been tanned both ways. They'll start, they'll do a like a quick veg, and then they will chrome tan the rest of yeah. it to do all the finishing work. Yeah. Called retan. Yep. Yeah. It's tan twice. Yeah. It's very fancy. <laughs> kind of like twice baked potatoes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and my funny joke is that all leather is vegan because cows eat grass. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, Brown Bird, I'm not 100% sure on the finishing on um, the hair on. That is something that I don't know a lot about. I should have asked the guy that was here yesterday. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a chrome tan leather. Right. Yeah. But like the dyeing process. So she said there was a green one that she got and the hair was a different color than the leather. It was attached to the hair, but well, I don't know their dyeing processes. Almost all of your, uh, the ones that I've seen, the hair on hides are have a sort of a gray leather, sort of this color. Yeah, she saw like like the fun like she bought a green rug, like it was dyed green, so it was unnatural. I see. It was an unnatural one. Um, I don't know their process of of dyeing the hair. They obviously didn't do it in a vat, or the whole thing would have been green. Right. You know, it probably... Maybe they have some sort of fancy hair dye yeah. that they use. Yeah. I'm not sure. They, they quaffed it. <laughs> Denny, do you slick your Herman Oak before you start a project? Almost always. Not always, but almost always. Yeah. I do. For it, to, it flattens the leather out. It lays the pores down. Uh, it just makes for a slicker finish. It gets a lot of, rid of a lot of imperfections that, that you make when you're 
yep. cutting it or handling it. So most of the time, if you see leather that is more upholstery-like or something that you might use as a garment and it's labeled as bison slash buffalo, that's going to be American buffalo or like U.S. bison hides. Right. Um, like the deer tan kind of look. If you see leather that is belting leather and it's buffalo, it is water buffalo from India. That's if, – if it is – any sort and and usually like the bison that you find it's very small batches it's going to be fairly expensive for that buffalo leather um it's it's pretty uncommon to find buffalo leather that is actually from the united states you will be looking for a very specific product most of the time if you see buffalo just like on my website on weaver's website on tandy's website unless it's unless it is that soft kind of deer tan look it's going to be water buffalo from india well, and, and the deal is, I think, in India, they use the water buffaloes as a food source. It's mm-hmm. a prominent food source. And they use it whereas, for beads. Yeah, <laughs> whereas here, everything. the prominent food source is beef. Right. You know? So, yeah. So we tan cowhides. They tan They do not tan cowhide in India, if yeah. anybody is familiar with that. <laughs> they don't do that. It's against their rules. Yeah. <laughs> Those cows are sacred. Let's see here. Any hair on hides full weight? No, so most, if it's not veg tan leather, most leather is coming out of, like the veg retan, you'll find some thicker stuff, but almost all chrome tan leathers are going to be thinner. They are your upholstery leathers. They are your boot leathers. They are, typically most chrome tan is going to be like the most I've seen it is an eight to nine ounce. And that's like the aged bark crazy trail oil tan that we sold. And that was the only one. Everything else is going to be five, six and, and under yeah. for a chrome tan leather. Yeah, they will split it. And even yeah. our... Even our uh, vegetable tan leather, the only full weight leather that we sell, I believe, is saddle skirting. Correct. And that is... Everything else has been split. Yeah. And even the skirting, they've taken off all the super fleshy stuff off the back. They've they've split it down until they they find the firm grain in the hide, and then they'll process. And so Herman Oak does a wet split, so they'll bring the hides out of the de-hairing process. They're all thick and slimy and really gross. And then they send it through a wet splitter to get all that gross, fleshy stuff off the back. Oh, the fatty. Exactly. And then they stuff. start tanning from there. And they might even do a secondary split on the stuff that's just going to be strap. But I, I believe they tan it all full weight. And then they just, they go from there. So the, the, the thickest of the thickest, they sell their old world harness, which is like 13 plus. Oh, Maybe we should just talk about this for a second, (laughs) because this has been a thing that even I didn't know until maybe like a year ago when Rourke was here. Saddle skirting. So we sell 11 to 12 ounce, 12 to 14, 13 plus. That is what that weight indicates is the thinnest that hide will be. So if you buy a 12 to 14 ounce piece of saddle skirting, Herman Oak specifically, what they do is they have a gauge that's probably, it's longer than our gauge. So this is our gauge and it is however long this is. 10 inches. 10 inches. They have like an 18 inch one. So they have one that can get them into the armpit of the hide. And that is typically the thinnest section on a hide. So it comes kind of up from the belly into that front armpit. And that is where they gauge on saddle skirting. And they will label it. So... Rourke, he went around. So we had a roll and I was like, Rourke, please help us because we were getting in skirting and we, we couldn't tell the difference between the 13, 15, the, the 12 to 14 or whatever. And we were just like, we don't understand. Like we're gauging the butt and it's all 20 ounces. Like, so we were just moving it all into the heaviest weight because we didn't understand what was happening. And so it is the thinnest that the hide will be up in the armpit. So when you buy saddle skirting, it is unleveled. It's right. unleveled hides. Yeah. And so they are finding the absolute thinnest spot on that hide. That is what they call it. But then the rest of it is going to be probably like 18 plus yeah. or whatever. That is Herman Oak saddle skirting. They want, you're making reins, you're cutting your saddle parts, you're doing all of these things and you want heavy leather. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the hide is not 12 to 14 ounces. When you get a piece of saddle skirting and you go to gauge it and you're like, holy moly, this thing is ridiculously thick. Like none of this is 12 to 14. Yeah, that's 100% correct because they found the thinnest section on the hide. That's how they label it. So somebody that's making a saddle, and I don't know why you would want 12 to 14 as the thinnest or a 13 plus or whatever. Well, if if you're like if you're making just a heavy duty 
roping saddle. Mm -hmm. You want something pretty heavy. Yeah. So you would use the the 15 plus or whatever. Yeah. If you're making just a, a pleasure type saddle, just something to ride down the road, then you would use the medium weight, the 12 to 14. Right. Or whatever that is. Right. And then if you're like, <clears throat> I used to make a lot of endurance saddles, which, which were saddles. They wanted the lightest weight they could get, but they still wanted a saddle. Okay. You know, so you use the lightest weight leather that you can get. Saddle skirting. Right. You don't you you don't want to use a a, a, a carving type leather like a, on a ten saddle. to eleven that's yeah. been leveled. You, you want to you want to use a, a saddle skirting, but to, you know the different weights you know help you determine how heavy a saddle you can build. Gotcha. Okay. You know. So that's that's all there is to that. Yeah. You know, and and you might get one piece of uh, twelve to fourteen that's actually overall quite a bit lighter than another piece of twelve to fourteen. Right. There's a lot of saddle makers that will request match sides, which would be a full hide of leather. Okay. That they split down the middle, but they get both halves. You know how hard that, that would be to keep yes, track of as a tannery. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, but it, uh, but Herman Oak will do that mm -hmm. for you for a price. Yeah. You know? Well, when I was talking to to the the boys last year, I believe at Sheridan, we were breaking down, and it was down to the point where you know there was just like we were helping Bob Park break down his table, and he's very right. specific about how his stuff breaks down, so he was taking a minute. Anyways, and we we're just all sitting around just chatting, and uh, I was talking to them, and you know they do that. For mm -hmm. the saddle makers in the industry, you know, Don yeah. Gonzalez, he knows exactly what he wants. They know exactly what he wants, and they make sure that he gets it mm -hmm. in order to, to build yeah. whatever style of saddle yeah. it is that he's working on. Right. Um, and so Herman Oak is very in tune to their customers and, and the needs of their customers. And so that that's a pretty neat thing that they yeah. offer. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Let's see. I think it's a good time. Oh, good. Do we have, let's see. We have, we've talked for a minute. Maybe we'll have to do a part two. Um, my friend got scammed on a purse that they used the wrong type of acrylic paint on and it wasn't flexible. Oh, and it just cracked all off. That'll be a thing. Uh, did you see Michael Seeger's art hair on high school way or is it the skin split? It's the skin split. And I... Yeah, hair on hides are definitely not full weight. I mean, you'll find some that are thicker, but full weight leather is saddle skirting. So no hair on hides, unless Herman Oak didn't get all the hair off one of their hides, and then we get one in one of our economy pluses, and then we make a wallet out of it, and we send it back to them with partial hair on. <laughs> <laughs> that happened one time. That was funny. Uh, no. And so that is how we get suede, right? And so they'll start the tanning process. They'll do the wet split to get all the super fleshiness, but then upholstery leather at two to three ounce, you still have a whole lot of leather left on the other side of what used to be this whole hide. And so they might get two or three layers of splits right. off of, or maybe one or two, I don't really know, one or two layers, because this is three to four ounce suede. So this is coming off of the backside of probably a lot of your upholstery leathers, a lot of those different things. You know, they don't, they try not to waste. Yeah, but a lot. most most of your split leathers that you get won't be nearly as big, square Correct. footage wise as as a as a full side. Yeah, simply because the edges, like like you showed on on this one piece, the edges are going to frill out. Yeah, and they'll trim those off. Well, yeah, and especially on your because the suede doesn't have grain anymore, the grain side or the the skin side has been split off. Um, your that's a lot of your strength gone. Right. And so they can't, it like, it just would, that would not be good leather. Um, a lot of times if you see a side or something, or maybe we get in some like low grade splits, um, maybe something in our split bundle or something, and you do have a full side, a lot of times in that armpit area, if there is one, it's terrible. Yeah. It does yeah. not have the strength apart. left. Um, and so most of the time, if you're buying just like true to God suede, it's going to be a double butt because that's the tightest part of the leather. That's the tightest grain you can get. And it still holds up like... I can't tear that. Yeah, it's a good, the, it's a good butt. Where they ask buffalo, does it equal bison or does buffalo yes, equal I got that. No, you're good. So, yeah. So that's typically a lot of times like all of the, the suede that we sell are double butts. Yeah. And they and, don't have a belly. And in reality, 
This isn't actually suede. Most people call this suede, right? This is suede. Isn't suede buffed? I would consider a split, like if you buy our veg tan splits, I would call that a split. But I think this is a suede. We buy it as a suede. It's buffed. Well, maybe so. Know. It feels buffy. But, but you know, a, a true suede is, is really soft and buttery, mm. almost like velvet. Yeah. Well, there's also, so there's new buck. So there is a, there's a point to where they've taken off so much of the grain that it's no longer smooth. Um, it just becomes a new buck. And so this is like, this is an SB foot side that a lot of the, the grain has been taken off. There is still a little bit of grain left on the surface, but it is a new buck, which is a buffed grain. Yeah. And it, it's very pretty leather, very yeah. nice feeling leather, but, but or, it doesn't have that top grain anymore. That, right. That slick, yeah. Yeah, that slick skin surface. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, you're in tanning. I learned, I saw a neat little video the other day, and you know um, how the term, uh, like, I don't even have a, like, too poor for a pot to piss in? Yeah, I don't have a pot to piss in. Yeah, don't have a pot. That is because (laughs) poor people used to sell their urine to the tanneries to tan leather. And so people at home would have a pot, but if you were too poor to afford the pot to piss in, like, that was a whole thing. (laughs) That's how that happened. That's a... Fun thing that I learned. Well, and and you know, Mex- on that same oh same topic, leather from Mexico. Mexico d- didn't doesn't still have a lot of resources in a lot of areas, and a lot of the leather they tanned they tanned in chicken manure. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and it smelled like it. I bet it did. <laughs> but it made leather. Yeah, you know, and. Uh, but that's why Mexican saddles had a really poor name for a long time. But on that same note, a lot of the finest craftsmen in the world are Mexican craftsmen. Mm-hmm. I mean, bootmakers and, and uh, silversmiths. And, and I feel like you want to talk too. about people that are really undersung. They are making a, like most of the shoes in the world that are your high-end brands. Yeah. Like most of your, your high-end leather cowboy boots are coming out of Mexico. And they have fantastic craftsmen yeah. that probably don't get paid a lot to yeah. make really beautiful yeah. items. Yeah. Um, so we do have kind of one last thing here, and I think that it's a really, really good thing to end on. Full grain versus top grain. Full grain. Okay, here's my opinion on it. Okay. I used to call it all top grain. Okay. But I don't anymore. A full grain leather is just is just like this. It, it has the hair taken off of it, and mm-hmm. it's the grain side of the leather. But it could be a really poor type of leather. A top grain leather is fine grain leather, the the best. Okay. The top of the, the cream of the crop. Okay. Yeah, see, for me, like, I don't consider that there is a difference. Like, full grain leather and top grain leather are really synonymous. So... All top grain leather is full grain leather. That's true. All top grain leather is full grain yeah. leather, but not all full grain leather is top grain leather. Right. And so you could be talking about maybe the grade right. and not the grain. Right. So depending on the point that you're trying to get across, um, for me, full grain, top grain, you, you could say either or. And when people try to differentiate, I, I always have to drill down and be like, what like what are you trying to get at? Like, yeah. What is the purpose of this question? Because unless it's a suede... Or a new buck where the grain, and you can also have what's called a corrected grain. And so corrected grain, they can go through, and sometimes your veg is like this, well, they'll, they'll lightly sand the surface and then kind of repress it out yeah. to where you get a corrected grain um, on some leather. But for the most part, like, full grain is top grain. But if you're talking about, like, a grade, like, I have Italian fine leather and it is a full grain situation. I, for me, it's like, what are you trying to get at? Yeah. Like, what's what's okay. your purpose? Okay, you just convinced me. I'm back to my old way of thinking. Okay, I agree. <laughs> top, top grain is just just a full grain leather. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah, because, I mean, suede has no grain, right? And New Buck, most of the grain has been sanded off. Grain is a layer. Like, you can look at, like, a cross-section of a piece, and there's a ton of, you can just Google, like, the uh, uh, side swipe with, you know, like, little pointer things. Like, it's some science book of what a piece of hide looks like. And you have the super fleshy stuff on the bottom, and then you have the flesh in the middle, Right. So that's under the grain, but it's still a good piece of leather. And then you start getting up into the grain, and there are different layers of grain. Um, and so even something that is corrected, it may not be corrected to the point where it's no longer full grain. Like, you might still have this the, the full surface, but even then you're kind of getting into semantics. But, like, well, all Herman Oak is going to be full grain leather. And Yes. it's It's the... It's the hair side of the leather. Yeah. Or let's talk about chicken skin. Okay. That's the feather side of the leather. Yeah. I mean, they, they tan chicken they hides. Sure. We've had chicken. Well, we've we got it. an ostrich over here. Yeah. But <laughs> but the, the feather side is, is the grain side. Yeah. The other side is the flesh side. So when you when you're the terms of leather, the grain side is the hair side. Yep. When you're talking about the flesh side, it's that nasty fuzzy side. It's the side connected to the membranes underneath. Well, like even like shell cordovan, I think is a great example. Shell cordovan has no grain left. They have gone down into a membrane. So shell cordovan, which is a horse butt, like it is a panel out of the horse. And how they discovered that situation is beyond me. But at some point, yeah, somebody was tanning and they're like, well, this is interesting. What we got in here? And so they split off the top and they split off the bottom until they find this membrane yeah. that is housed inside a horse butt. And then they finish that. And so really like shell cordovan, which is probably the most expensive leather on the market by like per square foot overall. Well, there, because there's only like, like a, a foot and, and a half, half on each. two and a half square feet <laughs> at the most off of a draft horse. Yeah. Um you know? And it takes the most amount of time. Yeah. That isn't even a full grain leather. Yeah. Like, like if you want to be specific and whatever about it. Like. Yeah, but it's also virtually waterproof. Yeah, indestructible. The way they tan it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, everything that we have on our table is genuine leather. The only thing that's not like when you start getting into PU leathers. Like, if you see something that's a PU leather, it could either be vinyl and have really no leather, and if you see something labeled vegan leather, that's just plastic. It is just vinyl. It's plastic. I can we all just agree that that vegan leather is plastic, unless you're specifically. And this was something I like. There was some fashion video that I came across the other day, and um, unless your article is specifically listed as pineapple leather or mushroom leather or apple leather and costs like five times more than you think that it should be worth, because that leather is very expensive to produce. Like, you're not, like, n- n- and nobody uses it to, like, mass manufacture unless you're a very, very specific brand. It's all just plastic. If you see vegan leather, you could be like, cool, I'm buying vinyl. <laughs> that's what it is. You're just buying some plastic that's not going to last as long. It's going to break down faster, and then it's going to go in a landfill when you're done with it, and it's never going to break down. It's just going to become plastic particles floating in our environment. Forever. Forever, because it never goes away. <laughs> it'll, it'll be in a, in a big wad out in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Yeah, it's one of my biggest pet peeves. All right, guys. Well, maybe we'll take this up again in a few weeks. We'll see where we get. Um, this was really fun. I hope you guys learned some stuff and had a good time, and we really hardly made it through any leather. Um, yeah. well, we talked about a lot. There's yeah. a lot to say, though. There's a lot to say. Yeah, there's, I, leather is, is yeah, complicated, and it's... Yeah, like I said, there's there's literally an unending amount of varieties that leather can be. Um, and I think that it's really good to just just talk about all the different types and, and have the conversation of... Because a lot of people like, they like to use buzzwords, I feel like, in the leather industry or in a lot of like your kind of semi-small scale but still larger manufacturing. They like to use these buzzwords that rile people up to get them to look down on other leather manufacturers or for whatever purpose. And really, I feel like it's all just a big fake cloud. <laughs> That's what I feel like. Yeah. And... 
don't complicate it. Yeah. You know, it's it's all leather. You know, it just depends on the finish and the look that you want and, and the kind of We didn't even get into that whole make. thing that you had talked about. We'll have to start with that next yeah. time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Denny had a whole thing he's been thinking about. He'll have to write it down. It'll be uh, yeah, a few I weeks. wrote it down, but I forgot it already. <laughs> <laughs> uh... All right, that's gone too far, Jakey. All right, guys, I hope everybody has a great weekend. Uh, we will be back. It is the end of the month already next week. It's the stinking end of the month. So we will have our roundtable on Wednesday and trading cards on Friday. All right. So we will see you guys next week. Have a good weekend.